thank you for uh, for having us today. Um, look forward to talking to you about uh, all things docs. Um, we are obviously very excited about docs and want to share that with you. So um, what what are we going to talk about? Uh, you know who we are, what do we do? Um, give you some information about how to contribute and how to help out. Um, and then Eric will talk more about Microsoft Learn uh, and what you can how you can use that site uh, and then share some resources. Uh, and certainly, Hopefully we'll have some time at the end uh, for some targeted Q&A, but certainly if you have any questions as we go, we can detour or uh, or if it's just in the chat, then Megan uh, or Doug can hopefully handle those. Um, so let's meet us. Um, I guess I'll introduce myself first um, now that we're a few minutes in. Um, I'm Aaron Chikowski. I'm a content developer on the MEM docs team, um, primarily focused on config manager, uh, although, um, you know, right now, tech, actually today, I've been working on some autopilot content. Um, so, you know, things kind of, of flux a little bit. Um, Doug's on the call as well. He's he's the manager of the team. Uh, he's been on the, the writing team for many years. Um, uh, actually, it's interesting that the amount of seniority that we have on this team, um, you know, uh, Eric actually uh, just had his, his 20th anniversary with the company. Um, and I think Brent and Doug are, are up there as well. Um, not to say that the rest of us are slouches, but um, you know, we do have uh, a number of us have, have been at Microsoft for a long time. So um, a lot of, a, a lot of expertise here. Um, we'll share this, uh, this deck later as well. Um, you'll, you'll, you may wonder why some of, of the names here are linkable, uh, <clears throat> and and that's just because it's a link to our Twitter our Twitter handles. Um, so we'll we'll share those out later. Um, I, I don't know, Eric or or Doug or Megan, do you guys want to give an introduction? Um, or while we're here, I'll give you the option, I guess, if you want to, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Yeah, I'll just say hi. Um, my <laughs> name is Doug Eby, and um, I've managed this team for a few years now. Um, we're reorganizing now, so all the names that you see here have kind of shuffled. Eric Sherlin is now on Windows 365. Um, my team now actually owns a lot more technologies than just MEM uh, from Windows 365, Microsoft Managed Desktop, Windows for the IT Pro. Uh, you're going to talk about Windows 11. Um, Mandy, for example, is uh, right now leading the effort to try to get content updated for Windows 11 uh, along with uh, some other people. Uh, and we also do Office deployment. So we've got this big charter and we're trying to figure out how to best organize. Um, we're also trying to um, build the teams a little bit as well. So it's it's exciting times in Docs. Yeah. Great, and I'll, I'll I... mention me. Oh, go ahead, go oh. ahead, Megan. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Uh, I am Megan. I worked on a configuration manager supporting it for Microsoft for about seven years, been on the doc team for about three. And, and uh, software updates uh, are my, <laughs> sorry, uh, software updates are, uh, were primarily my uh, SME area when I was supporting the product. Okay, and uh, I'm Eric Rayton. Um, I work on Intune and focus on apps. Uh, we put together some of the um, learned content that you'll see on Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, and I kind of work on some of the graph uh, at developer guidance, uh, API area, data warehouse, and so on. Cool, thanks. Um, yeah, so I think that's all we'll say there. We'll get into some of the uh, the more interesting stuff, more interesting stuff, <laughs> more interesting than us, right? The content's more interesting than us. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, like Doug said, we've got a we've got a big team and um, and are are growing. Um, and there's a lot of different things that we work on. Um, certainly, any 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 new release. So whether that's the the Intune monthly releases, um, Config Manager Tech Previews once a month, Config Manager Current Branch uh, every four months. Um, all that new content that comes out uh, as part of those releases that that's our team um, in in one in one form or another it's our team who's uh, who's put together that content sorry I'm keeping an eye on my dog <laughs> someone just drove by and I was waiting for my dog to go crazy um, um, you know one of the big things that we are we're trying to start working on more um, 
more recently is scenario and solution based content. Uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the release content is really kind of more of uh, the how to uh, describing some new component in the product or service, uh, how to use that, you know, how to how to configure the settings. Um, but you know, a lot of discussions that we've had with customers is trying to provide some bigger umbrella content that helps um, helps you understand how these things work in the in the broader scheme in the greater context um, and and how they and really how they integrate with other things um, so much of uh, certainly of endpoint manager these days uh, but really a lot of Microsoft technologies it's it's not siloed it's not um, uh, uh, unique right it, it requires a lot of uh, of other technologies to make it work um, and so trying to to paint that bigger picture for you and and explain how how it all works together uh, is is one thing that we're we're hoping to focus on in the future uh, as eric said and he'll talk more about uh, skilling content skilling is 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 one of our big keywords these days uh, on Microsoft Learn, and that's more content focused on teaching how um, about a concept or about a topic, um, not so much of a how to or uh, in, um, you know step by step how to use something for an IT pro, but more of uh, learning about that topic um, and and um, understanding more ab about the topic. Um, so Eric will go more into detail on Learn in a little bit. Um, we work with our engineering partners and our and and PMs on uh, on on the strings that you see in in the portal in the console. Um, doesn't always happen. <laughs> um, there was just been some tweets recently, uh, specifically with Config Manager. I think there's a guy who maintains a blog uh, of typos from from log files. Um, so yeah, they happen. Um, but you know, we try to work with with our engineering partners to make sure that, you know, what you see in the product, in the service, uh, there's consistent terminology and, um, um, and, and actually, you know, with an international audience, you know, that's especially important is making sure that the terminology that we're using is consistent uh, and, and simple um, so that when it's localized into um, the, I think it's 17 languages that we support in the product uh, in, in Config Manager and Intune um, that uh, um, that then helps the translations um, be, be more clear. Um, you know, yeah, things are written primarily in English in the product and in our documentation, um, but we want to make sure, you know, we have style guidelines um, that in some respects are done in such a way to to help support better localization of the content. Um, edit passes on contributions. I'll talk more about contributions in a, in a bit, um, but uh, in some respects it is easier. You know, if I got an email from um, uh, a, actually a, a colleague in, in Austria, uh, he's a, I think he's now a customer, no, he was a customer engineer. Um, Wilhelm Coker, I, I think I'm saying his name right. Um, I don't know if any of you know him, um, but he's a, He's a customer engineer. I think he was a customer engineer, and now he's in support. Um, he does a lot with with OS deployments. Um, anyways, he he was asking about a, a small change in the docs, and um, you know, I said, well, you can go and make that change yourself, and, and I'll happily review your submission. Um, and in some respects, it, it's 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 faster to get that published. Um, if he goes and makes the change, I can do a quick review and and um, and get it published. Versus for, for me to do it, it's going to take, you know, longer to kind of queue it up in in the, you know, the priority of work that we have going on. Um, but I'll talk more about contributions in just a minute. Uh, working with customer feedback, we've got several customer feedback channels, um, primarily through GitHub, and I'll, I think I'll mention that a little bit more when I do a demo. Um, and then looking, you know, what are the gaps that we have in our content and where, uh, where do we want to focus work and and prioritize on new content uh, and building out um, you know new new topics on um, either existing functionality uh, it, areas that 
you know, either through through data analysis or or customer discussions, we realize that hey, there's there's some things here that are missing. Uh, and then you know, we've got a lot of a lot of existing content, um, both for Intune and Autopilot and and Config Manager, uh, Config Manager especially. There's a lot of older content. Um, so you know, trying to maintain all of that uh, is just a is a a constant activity. Uh, I'll say. Um, so, you know, a question to to you all who are here today. Um, if you were in charge, if you had Doug's job, what would you have us work on? What what of this would you prioritize for us? I'll I'll, I'll put a question to the audience. Um, feel free to comment or or chat. And if you don't have any comments, that's fine too. I'll move on. Christian, you're on mute if you're. Perfect, double mute. Ah. <laughs> it's been a long day, I understand. It's uh, <laughs> excuse me. No. Um, I'd say release content is uh, is a good first one, good first place, but uh, really then maintenance on existing content is also so, so, so important yeah. because things are changing so often and so frequently and it's often hard to understand if this is really still working and still valid what is uh, standing there and sure. although it's only two or three years when i see something that's from 2019 ish then i'm yeah. thinking okay that's interesting let me check if it's still the way it, it's written yeah. down here so yeah fair point yeah the uh, uh actually <laughs> it's a great segue uh well I'm not going to segue right to it, but it's a, a, a great lead into my demo. Um, so, uh, and I'll, I promise everyone this wasn't, this wasn't set up in advance. Christian, <laughs> I didn't talk ahead of time. I would have uh, forgotten it anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that, uh, that sets up my demo quite nicely. So thank you for that. That's that, and that's good feedback too. Thank you. Okay. Um, so. So why is it important? You know, why do we ask people to contribute to docs? Um, and if you've if you've ever heard me speak, uh, I've done various user groups and uh, and MMS and other other things. And um, this is this is a common topic that comes up um, and around contributing to docs. And and there's a reason why that we continue to have these conversations with customers. Um, and so let me go through a few reasons why we think why we think it's important. Um, you know, it's it's a way to to help others. Uh, I I think one of the cool things about the endpoint manager community uh, is is that sense of community and the willingness to help others. Um, you know, user groups like this are a, are a great example, right, of coming together around a common topic and and wanting to share information and share knowledge. And what what better way to share that knowledge? Um, than to add it into the product docs, um, and you know the the move to GitHub, uh, how many ever years ago it was, um, I think, is a is a is a you know was a great change because it creates that open platform where anybody can comment uh, and uh, and contribute. Um, and it's important to note too that it's not, and, and you know, I'll show this in the demo. It's it's not just anybody can go and make a change. Uh, it there's a review process, um, so it 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 does have to go through that review. Um, you know, being able to bring your experience. Um, I, I I mentioned earlier how you know our our docs team we have so many so many people with so many years of experience, um, but. Uh, that may not be working hands on with it in in a you know a large customer environment or any customer environment. Um, it's been the last time that I've actually worked with the product uh, as a customer or with a customer has probably been oh, I don't know eight or nine years at least. <laughs> so that that kind of hands on operational experience, right? Uh, real world experience, I think is 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 valuable um, to be able to share with others. Uh, those um, those experiences, uh, right? So the same kind of thing here, right? Of, of those insights and and really that operational experience. Um, you know, sometimes the the great contributions that I see from uh, from customers are those little notes of, hey, by the way, if you see this, this is what it means, um, or you know, 
those little tips, uh, I think are great little ads of, Hey, in my experience, this is, this is what I've seen. This is what happened. Um, instances where there might be some gaps. Um, they might be things where we know it's a gap, uh, but, uh, you know, having someone be able to take the time to uh, add a new section to an article, uh, adding an entirely new article is a little more challenging, but it's totally doable. Uh, and if that is something that that you'd be interested in, um, probably the best way to start is to file an issue and let's talk about it first, um, you know, through an issue. Uh, and, and then we can figure out a, a plan to actually get that new content added. Um, this leads into the demo and kind of gets to, to Christian's point around keeping content fresh and updated. Uh, the date up at the top of every article, it's actually a hard-coded date. It's not automatically generated based upon the last time the article was edited or something. It's it's hard-coded. Um, and, and I'll get to more of that in, in just a minute with, uh, with the demo. Um, you know, you can show your contribution. Um, you know, it's, it's a way to either for the community uh, or for your manager, um, uh, a way to show that that you've gotten involved. So this is an example, it's a slightly older example, uh, almost a year now, um, but uh, the first icon that you see right after the length of time is the author of the article. And so the that first one will always be whoever is, is tagged as the author, but then all of the others are contributors. So in this example, uh, there's, there's Panu, he's one of our MVPs. Um, I think the third one here is one of our vendors. <laughs> um, and then Brian Dam is another one of our MVPs. And then Rob York, one of the PMs. Um, I honestly don't remember what article it was <laughs> that had um, had this lineup of characters here. But um, again, you can see that, uh, you know, this is the date that is hard coded on that article. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, this is published with the article. Um, Another way you can contribute is being able to view other other customers' feedback. Uh, as of right now, if you click on this link at the bottom of every page to view all page feedback, it'll show you the list of both open and closed issues that have been filed for that article. So that's a great way to get a sense of, you know, maybe someone else has already commented on something or, um, you know, just other other ac activities that are going on with that article. Let me just add here, this is something yeah. that I really, really find very valuable to see if a question that is arising for me has been maybe said by somebody else or asked by somebody else. So I really encourage everyone to check those uh, bottom parts of the documents. Yeah, yeah, it, you know, that's one of the great things about the public open source platform on GitHub is um, uh, is is that information is 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 available, um, and I know that can be that could also be kind of a, uh, a you know potentially a deterrent for some people of you know I don't I don't want to leave feedback because then everyone's going to see it. <laughs> um, so uh, there's some potential for some evolution of that in the future, um, but don't have much more to discuss on that right now. Okay, so I'm going to flip over to a browser window and I'll do a quick demo. Um, hopefully quick. Um, I'm going to use my test account, aaron42. Um, you'll probably never see this account anywhere other than in a demo that I'm doing, because um, that's really the only time that I use it. Um, so I'm not using an admin account. This would be uh, this would show an, an experience that would be similar to what to what you will have as, um, if if you were to do this. And I'm going to use an article of of mine. It's one of my one of my favorites uh, is all of the cloud management gateway articles. Um, but I'm going to use this one just because it's got a lot of interesting interesting uh, aspects in it that I can call out. <clears throat> um, so if you wanted to file feedback on this article, up in the upper right is a couple of useful links here. The one here for feedback, and that'll drop you to the bottom of the article where you can click a link um, to share feedback for the page, or as we were just mentioning, to view all, all page feedback. Um, if we wanted to make a change to the article, um, then you would select edit. And what this does is it flips it over to the source file in GitHub. So again, all of our content is, uh, is sourced in GitHub. And um, so when you click edit, it'll, 
it'll go over to that actual source file in GitHub. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of other stuff that we could go into. We could probably spend hours just talking about all of the different elements um, of how our content is, uh, you know, works with GitHub. But um, the short answer, the short sort of path here to making a change is once you get to the source file, um, what we call a pencil edit, because this little icon kind of looks like a pencil. Uh, <clears throat> so you click on that to edit the file, and it'll open up a, a browser editing experience. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details here in terms of forks and branches and all that. Um, I might talk, if we have time, I might talk a little bit about that. I've got a slide that, that shows a bit more. Um, but I wanted to give you a little bit of, you know, what, what this editing experience looks like. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, the date on the article is a, is a piece of metadata at the top. Um, I'll come back to that when I actually go to make an edit. Um, but if we kind of scroll down through the article, I mean, this is, this is the raw markdown um, that we use. Uh, markdown is the format uh, that all of our content uses. Uh, and as you can see, there are certain things here that um, with markdown, uh, so if you wanted to make a change, do something in italics. Uh, this is an example of that. And and this this editor, this sort of web editor, does a pretty good job of um, <clears throat> previewing some of those of those formats. Right? You can see that this is in italics. You can see here this is bolded. Um, the links are called out here. Um, you know, if you want to add links, that's uh, you know a, a pretty common thing. Um, there's different styles of links depending upon what you're linking to. Um, those can get a little complex uh, as we get into, you know, here's an example of one that's linking to another section of that article. So it's just going to the anchor. Here's, here's an example of one that's going to another article in the same folder. So it's still in the CMG folder. Um, here's an example of one that's going to another article in the same, uh, in Memdocs but a different folder. So it's it's file relative links. It can get a little confusing. The short answer here is just put a link in <laughs> and as part of the review process, we'll help fix it up. Um, if, you, if you're really passionate about figuring this out, you know, um, there, there's some guidance on it, but you know, just put in the link that you find in the browser uh, and, and we'll help out with that. Um, there's a lot of uh, resources available that go into more detail about, you know, the different styles that you can see with uh, with Markdown. You know, here's an example of table. The other thing is just look at an existing article, and that's that's part of why I chose this one is because it shows a lot of different types of things. You can see here, right, the the tips that show up, uh, the important notes, um, a, a numbered list, uh, and you notice they're all just number one. Uh, well, it automatically figures out, you know, which which step it is in the process. Um, you, you can do one, two, three, four if you want, but uh, you don't necessarily need to. Uh, and then the dash for a bulleted list. So um, th this is just a good example to kind of, of show all those examples. So um, as, as we were talking earlier, um, let's say you're reading an article and, th and this isn't a great example because the date is only a, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but let's say you're reading an article and as, as Kristen suggested, uh, the date on it is from 2019. And you're like, oh, is this, well, you, you go through the article and you're like, yeah, this is exactly what I'm seeing in, in, in the product. And yeah, this is all still, still accurate. The, one of the best ways to contribute is if you, if you encounter that and it's still technically accurate, hit edit, come in here, change the date to the current date, and submit that edit. Um, that's basically a, it's a signal saying, I've read this article, it's technically accurate, um, let's let's refresh the date. Um, we do that as, as we're working on things and we come across them, but we've got a lot of content. <laughs> um, and so having other eyes on the content, uh, this, is, this is a super easy and super helpful way uh, to help keep our content fresh. So you make a slight edit, um, excuse me. And so then down at the bottom is, is where you, is, is the next step here. Uh, and all you could just hit propose change. It will use this default text here, um, as, as the message. This is the commit. If you are familiar with, with, um, this process, um, 
I usually suggest that you put in some description of what you changed. So in this example, I uh, changed the date. No need to be super descriptive here um, or, or even get into the why, um, but really just the what. What did you change? Um, and, and the description is, uh, in, this, in this example, I, I, I don't bother with the description. So then select propose change. And it will it'll flop over here. Um, it'll show you a, a preview of what you changed. Uh, so this is important to look at to make sure that like, yeah, that's what I intended. <laughs> if you see something else here, then that means that maybe you accidentally hit a key when you shouldn't have. Um, so this is important to look at uh, and make sure that yes, that's that's what I intended to change. Uh, and then I'm going to create the pull request. And so this is saying I'm 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 requesting that you take the change that I I've I've made and pull it into into the main repository. Um, it'll automatically use your your commit message here as the name of the pull request, and that's that's fine. You can generally leave that. I I recommend that you then comment on the pull request describing why you made the change. So remember the, the commit message is more of the what, because this gets saved with the file. It's going to be there forever with that file. Um, but this in the pull request, um, this is it a chance then to be able to describe a little bit more. Um, in this example, um, doing a demo for a user group um, and this. Uh, And there's all sorts of emojis and stuff you can add to if you want. <laughs> um, and then create pull request again. So at this point, you're done. Um, mostly. <laughs> um, the pull request is created. We've got some bots. Uh, our PR merger bot goes into action and adds some labels. We'll see some other action here. Uh, we get a thank you. Um, it automatically assigns. So this is assigning my because I'm the author of this article. Um, my my actual work account then gets assigned uh, to this pull request, um, and uh, and then I you know me is as as author of the article can go and review the change. Um, usually then we'll also have one of our vendors uh, will come in and comment on uh, on it. We can go to the list of pull requests and see. Um, oh, it's one filed. 11 hours ago, um, a great example, right? They added added a missing word, um, but you can see here one of our vendors uh, has done a little bit of triage as well. In some cases, there's if it's a simple typo, um, you know, capitalizing a letter or changing something, um, our review team will just automatically approve it. So that's a very quick run through uh, the process. For the sake of time, I'm going to go back to the deck. I'm, I'll show this next slide, but I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, I want to hand it over to Eric. Um, this will be in the uh, in the deck that I share, so you can come back and kind of step through this yourself. What I wanted to call out, um, because we get this question from people a lot, is, hey, I've made an edit to a file. Why isn't it published yet? Um, and it's because there's some some things going on behind the scenes. Um, so we were just looking at memdocs, our public repository. And so when you click edit or you file an issue, it's going into our public repository. We also have a private repository. And this is the case for probably 95% of things on docs.microsoft.com. Um, there's a couple of exceptions where they are only a public repository. Uh, but in most cases, you'll there's actually this public private pair going on. Um, and there's a sync that happens between those. And we actually publish to the docs site um, from our private uh, repository. So when you make a change in the public, it can take some time for that to uh, a day, probably at most, to synchronize to our private re repository and then publish. Um, so just to give you a sense that there's some things going on behind the scenes, um, the same thing can come up when, um, if we publish a new article, like when we publish, uh, you know, when Megan and I published the uh, technical preview and config manager article, if you see some like the day you see that, uh, you know, you see one of us tweet out the doc link, 
uh, and you go and click edit on it right away, you'll probably get a 404 because we have created that article in the private repository, published that to docs. If you go right away and try and edit it, the sync hasn't happened yet. And so the, the source file isn't actually in the public repository yet. Um, so it happens both ways. You might actually have to wait a little bit before you can make some edits. Um, so again, that's all in the, in the deck if you wanna go and dig into it more and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, and now, Eric, did you want to do you want to share? I think that's what we did last time, right? Sure, I can do that. Um, yeah, thanks, Aaron. Sure. Um, let's see here. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, what I want to do is just a couple slides on. Um, let me get that shared first. The right screen here. Let me know if you can see that. Great, great, great. OK, so a couple slides, the first one on Microsoft Learn and then another slide on resources. So for Microsoft Learn, uh, we've got a lot of great content out there, both on Microsoft Endpoint Manager, um, but it, across all Microsoft technologies, and it's re really worth checking out if you're not familiar with it. Um, before I jump and show you uh, Microsoft Learn content out there. I wanted to first explain that the content is divided up into. Hold on one second. Let me make sure I'm sharing everything right. Yes, it's divided up into kind of a, a book model is the way I like to look at it. We've got units that pretty much are like pages. We have modules that are akin to chapters and then the paths, the learning paths you can think of them at like books. So if I jump over here to the Microsoft Learn content, um, I'm using a demo account. You can probably tell too. Um, what I what it does here, I can jump right to the way of looking up and browsing all content. Uh, we can search for Microsoft Endpoint Manager, or I can select it out here. And you'll see the different modules and learning paths related to Endpoint Manager. I'm going to focus right on the learning path, and you'll see that we have this fundamentals. So I can click on that. This is seven different modules focusing on Microsoft Endpoint Manager that we published not so long ago. Um, you can see that it's focused on really an introduction. This is all fundamentals on protecting your uh, endpoint manager environment to understanding device management and app management, conditional access, uh, compliance issues, and kind of the benefits. So this is the intro kind of stuff. There might be some interesting things in here that you can find. Uh, but we also have other uh, modules coming out. Um, there are four additional modules beyond the uh, fundamentals learning path. So we have one on planning migration, on implementation, on actually setting up Microsoft Intune and the process, the licensing. It should answer all your questions. And if you have questions beyond these uh, modules, you can give us the feedback. We see that feedback and we can make changes to those modules to make them uh, a little bit better. You can also see kind of different pieces to those uh, the the feedback, the rating on those modules, how many people have given feedback or or ratings. Um, we also have one on tenant attached that we published not so long ago. In addition, we have one that's reaching its final draft stage. It's getting feedback. We're making modifications. We're about to publish it. That's focused on co-management, and we'll have additional two on enabling co-management. Um, let me bring up some information on that. Um, so. So I mentioned, yes. So two additional ones on two addi additional modules on co-management. One for existing configuration manage manager clients, and the other on co-management for new internet-based devices. Then we'll also have a module on endpoint uh, analytics, and we have planned an additional two learning paths. And each of those learning paths will have. Uh, five modules each. The first learning path will be on adding and managing devices using Endpoint Manager, and we'll have, like I mentioned, five different modules. Uh, the first being on compliance and configuration for devices, then on securing your endpoints, another one on 
uh, restricting access, provisioning devices, and register and enrolling devices. Then a whole new learning path, a whole other learning path is planned that focuses on adding and managing apps and also patch management. We'll have uh, a module on really adding, configuring, and assigning apps, then preventing data links, access on-premise resources, one on keeping endpoints up to date when it comes to apps, and also monitoring, reporting, and analytics related to apps. All right, so those are, are the kind of upcoming plans when we have that for Microsoft uh, Learn content. And some of those, so so far we've been very focused on conceptual content when it comes to what's on Learn in relation to Endpoint Manager. Um, many of these will get really very involved in what you can do and how you can make these settings happen within Endpoint Manager. So when you finish as each module presents itself, um, it, it will give you the complete details of what you need to know before stepping through the module and what you will know when you're completed with this module. In addition, um, let me jump back here. So if we were to ju just jump into any of these, uh, you can see that we have those details. For instance, in the fundamentals, we don't have prereq prereqs, but in such so as tenant attached, we we certainly do. We also have a uh, area of knowledge checking, um, so that you can kind of get an idea. These pull directly from the content that you just went through with this module, and you can then see if you're on track with understanding what's going on here. You'll see up here. I'm using a demo account, but you can see that it tracks the information that you have. And I wanted to show you a little bit about that. So you can go, we've included links in this deck to tour uh, Microsoft Learn and learn a little bit more about it, but you can also track your learning activity, challenges, certifications, and achievements. So let me show you a little quickly about that. Uh, achievements, we're, we're describing here. Um, it's a nice little animated GIF, and, uh, but uh, it um, you can track what's going on, what you've finished, what you've completed, um, and we have uh, points, achievements, trophies, levels, and so on that's tracked with your profile. Um, and that's kind of nice to keep you on track, keep you motivated. Um, let me show you a real quick um, tech profile. This is probably an older view of what it looks like. Uh, you can see different levels that you're at, different points, um, and the kind of achievements of completing different topics um, different modules, different learning paths that you have done. All right, so that's pretty much the basics of Microsoft Learn. It's great content. It covers a, an awful lot of Microsoft technologies. If you want to learn something or jump from one technology that depends on another technology and learn about it, there should be really uh, content, plenty of content on everything Microsoft that you'd want to learn about in there. Um, all right. So next slide, second slide, uh, resources. Aaron stepped you through many of these different pieces. There's additional information uh, just to help you get started to jump back to. He showed you some of these things. There's uh, links that we have included here um, from document resources. It may seem like these are, are pretty straightforward, maybe searches. You should be able to find what you're looking for. Uh, can certainly give feedback if you ever have any kind of trouble finding things. But what I wanted to show you here as well, we've got the feedback. It describes feedback if you're interested in learning more about it. There's notifications if you don't already have this set up. You can get a RSS feed anytime something new comes out, especially when it comes out to the uh, what's new article to help you track what's going on with different things. I know that's especially true in Intune. Um, and we have before you can contribute to the doc. So I've got doc contribute here. We've got setting up a GitHub account. This will step you through this process and you can create an account right here and get full details on it. We also have a TOC that helps you understand the processes here. Um, in addition, we have writing essentials. So it's we, we love getting the information that you have, your particular situations, getting that integrated to the docs, making the docs better. If 
it's important to you. You can also look into different uh, guidance here related to markdown, uh, related to the way that we write here and docs so that they can be really translated across many different languages and make sense and very focused uh, to the point type content. We have style guides. We have all sorts of information um, that can be helpful to you if, if you need this. Uh, then uh, we also have the links on making existing docs. If uh, you need any kind of tips on that, it's all right here. Uh, Markdown references, as I've already mentioned, and we have an entire Microsoft style guide. Um, this is probably more information than you'll ever want, want to have on, on writing docs, but it's all right here. If you have any kind of questions, it would be right here and filtering and searching on it right here would be uh, available to you. Um, you could even download it as a PDF. Uh, and we have top 10 tips from Microsoft on, on all of this. And uh, I don't want to take too much time on this, but if you're interested in it, these links are here. Uh, Aaron, is there is there more that you would like to uh, cover? I don't think so. I think that, I mean I think it was the end of the end of the slides. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess you know we've got some time. If uh, anyone has uh, has any questions, um, I know I can probably hang out for a little bit uh, into the uh, even into the Windows 11 discussion if we. At that point, but um, so yeah, I will just uh, first of all thank you very much so far. Thank you. Um, I got some questions uh, actually. Um, one would be um, coming out from a non English speaking country, it's often a pain to read the translated docs. And it's not only to docs, it's translations in general. Um, how could we contribute there to improve the translations? Is there also a way? That's that's a uh, that's a good question and good feedback. Um, I, I'll start by uh, explaining a little bit about um, the the process. There's um, so depending upon the the content, you know, the doc set, uh, depending upon the specific area, um, the the translation is going to vary, um, and you know, in some instances, uh, we have um, what's <laughs> what we call human translation, um, where you know, it's it's <laughs> there is a human who understands um, the you know who is bilingual and um, and and has some understanding of technology. Um, they may not be experts in the specific technology, but um, and uh, and so then you know they will do an actual sort of manual translation mm -hmm. of the content, or at least review and make sure that yes, this actually makes sense in in this language. Um, there is other content. I mean, as as I think Megan dropped some um, some numbers into the chat there. Um, uh, due to the size of the content, um, and and you know the four thousand files, that's just for Config Manager. <laughs> Um, you know, so then you, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, Windows and SQL and Azure and right, that's a lot of, a lot of articles. Um, and uh, there just aren't the resources, uh, people or money <laughs> to be able to do all of that human translated. So, uh, um, some stuff is machine translated. Um, and there should be a banner that shows up at the top of an article when it is machine translated. Yeah. So, you know, letting you know that. Hey, this was a machine that did this. Um, in terms of how to provide feedback on that, uh, and and I might ask Doug to chime in here, just or at least keep me honest. My understanding is that um, we used to provide the ability to provide uh, both feedback and uh, contributions uh, for each language that we support. So if you if you go to the site and it's under the DEDE locale. Um, if you clicked edit uh, or feedback, it would it would actually go to um, the uh, a, a German version of our of okay. our public repository. I don't think we do that anymore. Um, I think uh, there was some changes made to um, again. I think from a resource perspective, we had 
uh, so many repositories, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that slide that I showed that had the private and the public, um, and then multiply that by every language, both yeah. public and private. And um, I think it became a, a way too much overhead. Um, so we we still have the private repositories, but I don't think we have those public repositories um, per locale. Um, I'm I'm assuming I I haven't tried this recently. I'm assuming that then if you you know if you're reading the the um, the German localized version of a doc and you click on edit or feedback, my assumption is it'll go to basically the 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 main public repository, which would be our U.S. based repository uh, or our uh, English English U.S. locale repository. Um, so I think then the the answer to the question. Uh, a long-winded answer to that question um, is is provide feedback um, mm. and you know file an issue that says, "Hey, I'm looking at at the you know the German version of this article, and this sentence, copy and paste the you know the German version of it, is gibberish, <laughs> or mm, it you know, or, or I would whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, or I okay. recommend changing it to to this. Um, you, you wouldn't be able to." hit edit and and make that change because when you hit edit i think it'll flip to the english mm, okay. uh, the english source um hey, but hey, providing it is, yeah one thing they could also do along right with what you're saying is uh mentioned okay they we can recognize that they may have recognized that it's machine translated they can say hey can we make this can we prioritize this to be human translated and then we can go in modify the metadata and the next time around it can be translated and you go so so what people out there reading can do is they can say all right this is a really important article to us um let's get this translated and make it make it the one of the top topics and we can do that we can help out that way and that oh, might be uh, in addition with what you're mentioning, Eric. Yeah, that's a great point, Eric. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Then um, one question on the learn content. Um, Eric, how do you keep up with the learn content? <laughs> so um, how do you mean? How do we how do we make sure that that content stays up to date or yes. how do we OK, um, it also has a date on there. And what I can do is it's very easy for me to search through, find out the actual date for these. The units um, and the modules and the learning paths and uh, revise those and also get any kind of feedback to make additional kind of revisions if things go out of date. So I'm working on the Intune content and when that changes and it constantly is is being updated i can then take that and know to go over to the learn the learn content and make the changes there so yes we keep a we track the dates on those as well even if it's not really exposed uh to to the reader out there uh we do keep track of that okay yeah i'm one, just think, one, thinking of, sorry go on Doug. Well, I was going to say one thing to mention is that we aren't the only ones to create learn content for our technologies. Worldwide Learning also creates learn content for Employment Manager and other technologies. And we, um, we're trying to build a better partnership so that we're aware of all the content that's out there. Uh, we're in the process of doing that now. Some of that content I think has been dated a little bit our messaging is a little bit different now than it was even six months ago so we want to make sure that we can go back and, and update that stuff too but that is a work in progress uh, to try to figure out how to best maintain this type of content there's a lot of it out there and content maintenance is is a big challenge for us yeah, absolutely i'm just thinking about such big changes or big introductions like the settings catalog or something which really really changes the way of working where i can see a lot of uh, yeah, work actually to update everything. OK. Thank you. And then there was a third question, which I forgot. Hmm. <laughs> you know, that brain cell problem again. <laughs> but I I don't have to be the only one asking. Everybody else is also absolutely welcome to jump in and ask questions. Uh, and Megan, thank you for being the numbers uh, person here and uh, posting that impressive number of 4,117 files 
on config manager and PowerShell. That's crazy. If you would print that out, I don't know how many bookshelves that would be. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. So are there any other questions? So um, also here in in uh, the voice version, the slide share uh, the slides will be shared. So you can click on the links. Then um, we will uh, share that via the meetup page, and I can notify everyone. So who of you in the call already uh, contributed to Docs? Me neither, to be honest. Really. <laughs> I'm a, a big consumer of the docs, and I think it's it's really important and great that they are growing and growing and growing. Now, uh, you know, the follow-up question then is, how many of you have a GitHub account? Okay, it, it's that's a good first step. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd say if you don't already have a GitHub account, you know, go go do that um, because I I can you know I can see the situation where. Uh, you know, right now you're like, oh yeah, this is great. This is all good. Um, and then that day comes where you're reading something and you see a typo and you're like, oh, oh, how do I do that again? And then, oh, I need an account. And it's just like, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, get bogged down in the, in the, I guess the yeah. overhead, right. Of needing to set up the account and all of that. Um, but if you have the account and you're just all, all set up and ready to go, then when that, that day comes and, uh, and you find something that you want to change, uh, or or, uh, or or the question that you want to ask and provide feedback, uh, you already have that account and you're ready to go. That's that's a good a good first step. I think my question came back. It was uh, related to uh, blocks and MVPs and so on. So, are there any ideas to incorporate what uh, all those people are doing, and also especially doing with new features and get helping a lot of people, myself included? to really uh, implement new things? Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's a good question uh, and uh, does come up uh, a bit is, yeah. So, I mean, we, we kind of strive to be the, you know, official source of truth mm. for, uh, for Microsoft products. And um, there are instances where someone else has written something that is really good <laughs> on on some some specific topic some troubleshooting issue or 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 whatever um so there are some instances where you know what let's just link to their content um say you know hey if you want to go into more depth on this or you want to know something else you know uh for more information on something go look at this blog post that this other person wrote because the, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the source, it's good, it's it, it is the source of truth. Yeah, it's, it's accurate. Um, you know, generally, um, at the same, at the same time, I like, um, and, and I apologize if any of our MVPs are, are on this or listen to the recording later, but, um, you know, a lot of them are also content. They're their own content generators. Um, and they're looking to drive, uh, you know, drive traffic to their sites and, uh, or in some cases they're consulting companies. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's in kind of their best interests, uh, in some instances to promote their own content. Um, and I, I get that, right. That's, that's kind of the, um, you know, the nature of things. Um, and, and in some cases, uh, they do things differently. Um, that might be better served for for different audiences. Mm -hmm. um, I know some of the MVPs will put out more step by step guidance with screenshots, um, and you know that's another common question we get is you know hey give us more screenshots, uh, and that that honestly is something that we um, we do we'll we'll add screenshots and and images as necessary, but we we. Uh, by design, try to avoid the step-by-step -step screenshotting. Um, but I know there are MVPs and others who put together blog posts with those step-by-step -step screenshots. So I think that kind of serves um, ser serves a market there. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, that's my thoughts on that. I don't know if that answered the question. Um, it did. Okay. Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a complicated topic because you really have yeah. to make sure. That's what you said. You want to be or you have to be the official source of truth for Microsoft products. Uh, which is also, I think, support related and so on. So if you are doing things other than described, you might lose a support contract or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there are there are some articles. Um, we should probably almost go and uh, I think there's a way we can turn off feedback or uh, even turn off contributions on a per article basis. Because um, there are some articles, you know, supported configurations or uh licensing faqs where people will submit a contribution and it's just like no sorry <laughs> we're, we're not like don't touch that <laughs> very you know very cautious about um, yeah. about certain things be because it does come down to you know there might be some legal implication yeah, or absolutely. or supportability uh yeah. implication so yeah it gets fun so that's uh, reading. It's it's so easy reading the docs, but uh, <laughs> when you see what's behind it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, different different view. Thank you so much. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks for having us. Are there any other other questions besides the numbers game? We have a new high scorer with five thousand five hundred sixty four articles, but it's only half the truth because we only see one half. So <laughs> I still see him is still winning. <laughs> okay good i hear no other voices see no other people thank you doug thank you for being around uh thank you aaron and eric for uh contributing to our user group um showing the insights of the microsoft docs and also microsoft learn uh, pretty interesting and i will try to contribute more or start <laughs> and then do more. I, I look forward to seeing seeing you first. Uh, okay. But also yeah. keep in mind, I'll, I'll, I'll also, you know, one final quick plug. Um, you know, what we talked about was specific to Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, so Config Manager, Intune, Autopilot, Windows 365. Um, but pretty much all that we talked about holds true for most everything on docs.microsoft.com. So SQL. Azure, Windows, .NET, PowerShell, you name it. Like if it's on docs.microsoft.com, um, it, it doesn't always allow you to give feedback and edit, but um, it, it is often there uh, and um, often, not always, but often there there are folks like us behind behind that content as well. Um, so uh, it's, it's really not just MEM, uh, but you know, anything on docs. So thanks again.